Oh hey everyone, so sorry for the delay in videos, but this past month I was pretty busy, uh, especially since I started my internship at Amazon, uh, which so far is going pretty well, and I really enjoy the work. Um, but today, I thought I'd take some time to talk about some of the most useful uh, Python tips and tricks that I use actively in Lead Code in my interviews that might greatly help you out. So uh, enjoy the video, and let me know if you have any questions. All right, so let's start off with some of the tips that I have for lists. So the first one is enumerate, and let's say given the string a, b, a, b, c, d, we want to store the indices for each unique character, which means like for a, we want 0, 2, b, we want 1, 3, c, we want 4, and d, we want 5. And the way we can do this is we can do d equals to collections.default div, and let's say the default value um, is a list. And then what we can then do is for index character um, and enumerate, uh, let's copy paste the string over here. Um, we can just do d of the character dot append index. And then if we print out uh, the dictionary, um, you can see that we have what we wanted. And what enumerate basically does is that um, it iterates over the character and the index um, uh, at the same time. So you have access to both uh, both values and you can use them uh, whenever you want and however you want. All right, now let's move on to um, zip. So what zip does is basically it lets you uh, iterate over multiple elements at once. Um, and to show this in action, let's say given the string, we want to find how many characters overlap. And we can do this with like, have a counter, sorry, initiate to zero. And for, let's say character one, character two, and zip of these two strings. Um, we can say if character one equals to character two, counter plus 61, and then we put out a counter. Um, and if you see that, you see there's two overlap. But what if we want to compare another string as well? Then we can just add another character into the for loop, add the string in, and say let's say character three. And then we get result one. Uh, moving on to list splicing. Um, let's say we have a list, uh, right, just say one, two, three, four. If we want to get the last element, we can just do print array of negative one, since we go from the back, negative one, and we get four. Uh, what well, if we want to get the three or the second last element? We can just do negative two and so on um, until we get back to one. What well, if we want to reverse a the list? Then we can just do a different type of splicing where we just reverse the list like this and this will print out four, three, two, one. Uh, for list comprehension, let's say given all the numbers from zero to 200, let's create an array of all numbers divisible by uh, seven. So to start off with, let's first create a list of numbers from 0 to 100 um, using a one-liner, and this is called list comprehension. So print create a list x for x in the range 0 to 100. And we can see here that this creates the list we want. But now let's add a conditional to the statement. So say all numbers of our sudden, if x mod 7 equals to 0, and this should create the list that we want, as you can see. Um, Moving on, we have sum, so similar to the last uh, thing, given a list of array of numbers, um, find the sum of all the even numbers. So what we can do is just print sum, and then use the list comprehension again, x for x in this array here, if x mod 2 equals 0 or is even. As you can see, we can get 12, uh, which is the value that we wanted. Uh, now let's move on to creating lists, um, and this is especially useful for DP problems um, since they might require you to make like a DP table. Um, so for the first one, let's create a 1D array of zeros of size 10. So we can just do 0 times 10, and this will give us the array. We can also put different values, such as like null values as well, um, if you want, wherever you want. And now let's say we want to create a 2D array of zeros of size 5 by 10. And this will be useful for um, 2D uh, DP problems, such as like filling out a grid or something similar to that. So what we can do is do, let's just actually do this, matrix equals to, um, first let's create the inner one, so times 10. And to create uh, the two dimensional layer, we can just do four um, in range 10, oh sorry, five. 
And um, if you're unfamiliar with what the underscore does, it basically means we can replace it with a variable if we want, but since we don't use the variable, we can just use the underscore uh, to represent it that way. And now to print on the matrix, so for row and matrix, print row. And as you can see, this gets the matrix that we want. All right, so the last part is sorting. So let's say, um, so to simply start with, let's sort in reverse. So let's say array equals two, one, five, three, two. And then to sort in reverse, we can just do print array, sorted array, and then add uh, reverse equals to true. And this will give us the sorted array in reverse. But now let's talk about sorting <coughs> using lambdas. So like given this list, um, given this list of strings, we want to sort by the length of each string. So what we can do is print sorted this, where um, key, we have a key now, that we use to sort by equals to you a lambda x, such that we use the length of x. So basically we take all the lengths of all the elements and then sort accordingly to that key. And as you can see, we sort that way. But now let's talk about sorting using lambdas and double keys. So given this string, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, let's sort them um, by string length. So to start with, let's print sorted um, lam or key equals to lambda x for length of string of x, since we have to convert to a string to get the length. So at first we get this. But what if we want, um, so what if we get match and they're the same length, so like four and seven, but we want seven to be first. What we can do then is we can add an extra key um, and what we can do is negative x. And this will take into account um, the value. And if we run this, we get seven, four, eight, nine, 56, one, two, three. Um, and to compare it to the last one, so uh, when we had positive x, as you can see, uh, if the numbers or the values are the same length, then um, in the first case, it was sorted by ascending order. But for the second one, since we're putting a negative value first, um, it would reverse the order and sort it uh, this way instead. Uh, so that's all the trips, uh, all the tips that I had for lists. Um, if you have any more, let me know and I can talk about them in a future video. All right, so now let's talk about dictionaries and some of the tips I have for this type of object. So to start with, we have default dict, and essentially what default dict does is when you create um, a default dict, you pass in a specific type of variable um, that the value will automatically be assigned to. And the type could be something like an integer, it could be a boolean, it could be a list. And for my example, I'll use a list to showcase the use case of default dict. So for the problem we have, um, we want to store the indices for the unique characters in this string. So we want to get that result. And originally, if you were to just use a regular dictionary, what you have to do is you create a dictionary and for uh, index char and enumerate, uh, copy paste the string. First, um, you have to check if the key already exists um, in the dictionary. So if key in D, then what you can do is do D key dot append, oh sorry. If char in D, you can do D char dot pen index. However, if it doesn't exist, you can't just do uh, dot pen since it doesn't exist. What you have to do instead is else you have to do D of char equals to a new list and you have to create it like that. When you print it out here, what you get is uh, what we want. But a similar way to do this is when we use default, so the collections dot default. We pass in a list, so by uh, by default, um, the value of any key will be a list. So now we can do for i uh, index char enumerate the string. We can just do d of char dot append index. Um, so if the default dict finds that the um, value doesn't exist, it automatically creates it as a list, and then you can automatically just add to it. So if you print d here we get uh, the exact same result. So now let's move on to um, irating dictionaries. So let's say given dictionary of this, we want to irate first by both value and key. And to do that, we can do for key, value, and d.items. So this would grab both the key and value pair. We can do print key, key, value. 
and this will get you the key on the left hand since we put the key first then we print the value well if we only want to get like the value or only the key then what we can do is for key value in d dot keys we can just print only the key here so it's just get you one two and three and same thing for value we can just do the dot values and we get just the value now let's talk about sewing dictionaries so let's give in this dictionary here we want to sort it uh, by the key to get this resulting one and to do this all we have to do is just do print dict sorted d the items and essentially what this line does is first it grabs all the uh, key value pairs it then sorts them so by default it sorts by the key and then we put it back inside a dict object and then what we're left with is this dictionary sorted by key uh, the key the key values but what if we want to sort um by value so let's say we have this dictionary here and to sort by values all we have to do is um going back to the lambda i talked about in the previous list we can create the key to be uh, lambda of item or since we only want to sort by the value we do item of one which gets the value as the key that we want to sort by and the same as before after we sort them we put it back into a dictionary so after we print this it should get what exactly what we want and now let's talk finally about counter so just given the string we want to print the characters sorted in order where they appear most and what counter does is um if you pass in a string into a counter um it will it would print out a dictionary where the key would be um the character and the value will be the number of times it appears. So let's just see what this prints out. So as you can see, D appears 11 times, A appears 10 times, and C appears four times. Now, what we want to do is now is print the characters sort in order where they appear the most. So we want B, A, C, um, just print it out that way. Um, and to do that, what we can do is uh, Going to the previous one, we do print d sorted. Instead of d, we do collection dot count collections dot counter of this string dot items and sort by the value. And this would return the dictionary. Oh, sorry, collections. So this will return the dictionary that, that we want. And if we just want to extract the keys, um, what we do is we can just do dot keys here. So tying it all together. And this would sort the uh, characters um, in by value, uh, and the value would be the number of times they appear in uh, least to greatest value. So since um, if I were to print this out again, as you can see, C appears the least amount of times, so we print C first, then A, and then B. Alright, so now onto some miscellaneous tips and tricks that don't fall into a specific category. Uh, the first one I have is split and join. So let's say given this string here, we want a string of just the characters. We could do um, dot remove or dot replace, but another way of doing this would just be to do a string dot split by a specific delimiter which would be the common case and you, as you can see it prints out just the characters now if we want to join this back into a string all we have to do is just have an empty string in the front then call dot join on it and if we run this you can see that we get the string that we want the next thing that i'll be talking about is the custom increment for for loops um let's say we want to gather all the even numbers between a1 and 10. um as i previously said before we could use like a conditional statement in our list comprehension but another way of doing this would just be to use a list comprehension with a custom for loop incrementer instead of just the normal default one. So we can have x for x in range 0 to 10. And since we want all the even numbers, we just increment it by 2 now. Now if we print this, as you can see, we get the result we want. Um, if we print 3, it'll be multiples of 3, 4, multiples of 4, and so on. Alright, the next thing I'll be talking about is a little more complex than the previous things that I was talking about, but this is called um, LRU cache, which is a decorator um, that has built-in memoization. And um, for this for this uh, tip, I wasn't planning to call it out, um, but I prepared beforehand. 
So let's say we have the Fibonacci function, um, which is a recursive way, uh, recursive formula where um, given like a number we call number minus one plus a number minus two all the way until we get to number less than two. Um, as you can see, like in the default way of doing this or the mo most um, least optimal way of doing it, there's a lot of repeated work that's done. Um, now, if we want to uh, optimize this uh, not optimal function, we could use something called a cache. And in our cache, basically, um, we can store the results that we already got such that we don't have to repeat work anymore. So as you can see, let's say we have a cache here. And now in our cache, uh, we save the results of the work that we've done. So when we encounter a similar case, we can just call from the cache and not have to do any repeat work. Now, typing this cache and implementing it might be a bit of trouble. So what we can do instead is just, is just have the non-optimal function um, down here, but we add this decorator called LRU cache. And it, it basically takes in parameter, which is like the size of the cache. You can set it to none, um, or you, if you need uh, like memory constraints, you could set it to like a specific memory size. Now, if we run this now, as you can see, um, it'll take some time to run. But so for the first method, it took three seconds total since it was not optimal and we had to do repeat work. For the second method, since we implemented the cache, <clears throat> it was a lot faster. Now it's basically zero seconds. And for the last method as well, since we used the decorator, um, it's also zero seconds. All right, so now let's talk about non-local. And this is probably going to be something really useful when you use DFS or inner, um, when you have like inner functions you want to call from our functions. So let's say we have a method called main, and inside main we have another method uh, called method. And basically what this inner method does is it takes in a Boolean, and if the Boolean is true, we turn test to true, and then we end the function. So let's call method on true once, let's call method and pass in true, and what happens here. So if we run this, we get false. And the reason why test doesn't get turned to true here is because it's not in the scope of the inner function. And if we want to fix that, all we have to do is add this line called non-local test, non-local test, and basically what the non-local um, keyword does is it lets you assign values to a variable from the out outer scope. So since test is in our scope and we call it non-local test, now we can actually assign test to true instead of um, making a new variable in their test. So if you run this, as you can see, it returns true. And the last one, um, it's not really very useful, but it would make your code cleaner, um, especially for like interviews, is ternary expressions. So basically if we have a method that takes in a Boolean and we can have true if B, else false. And basically what this simplifies down to if b equals to true, print true otherwise print false. So this basically does the same thing as here, but as you can see, uh, these four lines get condensed down to one line, which makes it a lot simpler and more readable. All right, so that's basically all the tips I had for you guys. Um, if I miss anything, please let me know in the comments. And if there's any other video ideas you guys would like me to do, I'll just leave a comment below and I'll try to get it done in the future. Thank you.